Now we'll go over types of plots. The first type of plot we'll cover is a stem and leaf plot. In a stem and leaf plot, we first make a list of tens places and a list of ones places. Here's an arbitrary list of 16 numbers. Before we make the list, let's first sort these numbers. We'll use Excel to do this. First, we use the white plus sign to select them all. We click in A1, hold the mouse button down, and move the mouse downward until all of the numbers are selected by this green rectangle. If you make a mistake and move the mouse too far, that's okay. Just keep the button held down, move it back to the left, and release the button once you have the boxes that you're after. Try not to go too far down. You don't want this blank box below the 80 selected, but if you do, it's fine as long as you keep the button held down. We'll release the button, and this draws the green rectangle around our numbers. Now we go to Home, go to the upper right corner of the window to where it says Sort and Filter in the Editing section. Click on Sort and Filter, and we will sort smallest to largest. This will allow us to record our tens places and ones places in order. Note in cell A1 that our smallest number is 25. That means we have no numbers below 25. So we'll put a 0 and a 1, but leave the ones place blank to show there are no numbers that start with 0 or 1. We do have a number that has a tens place of 2 and a ones place of 5, so we'll write 5 in the ones place. Notice that in the list, now after 2, we skip directly to 4, so we have to leave a placeholder for having a tens place of 3, but we'll write no numbers afterwards in the ones place. Then we have a 40, so we'll write in the tens place 4 and in the ones place 0, for 50, we have 50 and 55. So what we'll do is write 5 in the tens place and then list the possible ones places that come after 0 and 5 for 50 and 55. We'll continue on for 65. Now for 70, we have 70 and then 75 occurring twice. So we'll write 7, 0, and then list 5 twice. For 80, notice we have 80 occurring three times, and then 5 occurring once. So we'll write 0 three times, and we'll write 5 at the end. For 90, we have 90, and then 95, and 95 again. So we'll write 0, 5, 5. Then for 100, we'll write 10 for the tens place, and then 0 for the ones place. And this is our completed stem and leaf plot. We can also create what's called a dot plot. To create the dot plot, let's begin with some labels. Any number beginning with a tens place of 0 will be between 0 and 9. Now since we have no numbers that fall in that range, we'll leave this part blank. Anything that begins with a tens place of 1 would be 10 to 19. We'll leave this blank also. Next, we'll do 20 to 29. Now, we have one data point that falls in that range, so we'll place a single dot afterward. Between 30 and 39, we have no numbers, so we'll leave this blank. Between 40 and 49, we have a single number. 
between 50 and 59, we have two numbers. We have a 0 and a 5, so we'll place two dots. Between 60 and 69, we have a single number again. Between 70 and 79, we have three numbers. 0, 5, 5, so we'll place three dots. Between 80 and 89, we have four numbers. Three zeros and a five, so we place four dots after this. For 90 to 99, we have three numbers again, 0, 5, 5, so three dots. And at 100, we have only one dot. This completes our dot plot. We can also create a graph called a histogram. This is something we'll use often in this course. We can make Excel create the histogram for us. However, first we need to do a little bit of preparation. In this first box, we'll enter the same label we had in the dot plot, 0 to 9. Let's enter the other labels quickly. Next to these labels, we'll enter what's called the frequency. Now, in each of these positions next to the labels, we'll enter the number of dots in the dot plot. From 0 to 9, we had no dots, so we type the number 0 and press Enter. For 10 to 19, again, enter 0 and press Enter. Then, for 20 to 29, we'll say 1, 0 for 30 to 39, and we'll do the same all the way down the line. One dot for 40 to 49, two dots for 50 to 59, one dot for 60 to 69, three dots in the 70 to 79 range, four for the 80 range, three for the 90 range, and a single dot for 100. Now to create this histogram, we'll click in box J6, which is the first frequency, and select all of the frequencies using the green rectangle. In Excel, to create a histogram, we go to the Insert selection, go to the Chart selection here in the top middle, and go to the first option. A 2D column chart is what we need. By default, Excel will place this right on top of your data, so we'll need to move this downward to make room. You may also need to shrink this slightly so that it will fit on your page properly. If this is the case, move your cursor to one of the corners to get this double arrow that looks diagonal. Click it, hold the mouse button down, and drag this downward to shrink the graph slightly. Also, you can move the mouse and get this quadruple arrow symbol if you put your mouse in the white space. Click here and you can move the graph by dragging. Let's move the graph somewhere to where it's out of the way. There are also a number of things we can do to make this histogram look a little neater. For one thing, let's give it a proper chart title other than the name chart title. You can double click on the chart title inside of this dotted rectangle. This will allow you to give the chart a new title. The data that I've put into the table were test scores on a certain quiz in Math 152. So I'll call this Math 152 Test Scores. Now we can also add titles to the axis as well. We can click the green plus sign and enable this option that says Axis Titles. Now when you do a histogram, the y-axis, this axis that is up and down, will be your frequency. We can also double-click inside of this dotted rectangle, backspace the generic axis title, and type the words frequency. We can do the same thing at the bottom for this left and right axis called the x-axis. Double-click inside, backspace the generic title, and remember that we were classifying these by the score. 
You may also notice that the numbers written on the bottom of the graph don't really correspond with our labels. We'll need to make a change to the graph to do that. We can right click on this axis on the numbers and say select data. Now notice that the second category where it says horizontal axis labels reads 1 and then a list goes on until it says 11 down at the bottom. We don't want to use these. We would rather use these labels that we typed previously. So we'll click Edit in this box and select all of the labels that were next to the numbers. Starting in I6 where it says 0 to 9, click here, drag the green rectangle until it's around all of the numbers. Once again, if you miss or you accidentally leave some empty space, it's okay. Just keep the mouse button held down and maneuver your mouse until the green rectangle is just around these numbers. Once you have the right things, click OK. You can see that our axis labels in this list have changed. Press OK one more time. We can scroll down using the scroll bar and we can see that our labels are now in the right place. The frequency bars in the histogram now correspond to the correct labels. Now many instructors also like to see a different bar shape on their graph. So with our graph selected we can also go to Quick Layout where it gives you a number of options for the layout. In Math 152 we're going to use option number 8 for the larger bars.